This video is going to talk about samples and populations. In further maths you don't need to know too much about samples and populations beyond the definitions. You need to understand what they mean, so I'm just going to explain that now. A population is a whole group of something, and a sample is a small selection of that whole group. So I'll tell you what I mean. Say we've got the population of Australia. That is a terrible map of Australia, but anyway, here we go. Whoa, Victoria. Yay. If we've got the entire population of Australia and we want to know what's the average height, there are a couple of ways we could go about that. We could try and measure the height of absolutely every single person in Australia and then figure out the average. But is that really going to be possible? No. In a lot of cases, it's not possible to measure the entire population, the large group that you want to know about. So what we do is we take a sample, which is a small subset of the entire population. So in this case, we might measure a group of people, um, say 200 or something like that, randomly selected people. We'll measure their heights, figure out the average height of this sample group, and from that we can say, all right, well, from this we're inferring that the average population of the, all of Australia, this population, must be the same. So say it's 186 centimetres. From, we take the information about the sample and we apply it in effect. We say, ah, well, that must be able to be applicable to this entire population. And that's the basic gist. Now, a population isn't always the population of a country. It could be any type of population. So we might say um, the population of your school. And if we want to know the average height of all of the students in your school, we might select 30 students at random. And hopefully they would come from a bunch of different year levels. For example, they wouldn't all be year 12s because then we'd get much taller. You know, that we'd have some year 7s in there and some year 8s, etc. But we'd have to choose them randomly. And that would make it an effective sample. So it doesn't have to be the population of an entire country or a continent or something like that. We're not saying the population of Europe or the population of America. We're saying a population as in being any group of people where it's the whole of them, the sum of them. It's all of who you want to measure. And a sample would be just some little group from within that. So if you think of it like this, this is the population, everyone we want to make some inference about. And a sample would be just taking one little chunk of it and saying, because I know what these people are like, I can say that, well, that must mean that's what they're all like. So how do you choose a good sample? in an effective way that means you can apply it to an entire population, that you're going to be able to transfer that knowledge, that information across. Well, let's say we're trying to figure out what footy team everyone in Victoria barracks for. So who's our population? Our population is everyone who lives in Victoria, because that's the entirety of the group. I want to know everyone who lives in Victoria. That's my population. So where might I get my sample from? Okay, well, how about this? I know that a lot of people who are at the MCG on a Saturday at a football match, they all know about football, so maybe I'll go ask them. So at the end of a football game between Collingwood and Essendon, as they're all filing out at the MCG, I say, who do you barrack for? Now, what answers do you think I'm going to get? I'm going to get some that say, what, did I, what two teams did I say? Collingwood and Essendon. I'm going to get a lot of people that say Collingwood and a lot of people that say Essendon. How many do you think I'm going to get for the other however many teams? How many people there are going to say they barrack for the Gold Coast, for example? Not a lot, right? That is a really poorly chosen sample because there's going to be a heck of a lot of bias in there. So the way that you choose a sample has to be random. And that's what when we bring in this term that you'll sometimes see in further maths, a simple random sample. And all that really means is that you have to pick them without bias. You have to pick your sample people so that they basically have nothing in common. Or if they do have something in common, it's just random that they do in the first place. So things you could, what other ways you could, you could have sampled this population might be picking numbers at random from a phone book, something like that. But then they do actually all have something in common because everyone you've chosen in your sample has a phone number. Right. So a better way to do it would be taking names off the electoral roll or um, actually, no, that's not a very good way either, because what about them, those people? What do they all have in common? They're all over the age of 18 to be on the electoral roll. So then you've excluded kids in your sample as well. So things like that, you just have to be really careful when you're choosing your sample. The best way for this um, example 
for the whole population of Victoria is probably off the census data. You have to pick some names at complete random. One doesn't affect the other. So, for example, if you pick a child, you don't say, oh, well, I'll try and not pick a child in the next group because I want to have more adults than kids in my sample. Nuh-uh, it has to be completely random. So one more example. Say I want to know how all of the students at my school get to school. So some of them walk. Some of them get driven in a car, some of them ride their bike, some of them catch the bus. Um, these, these are some of the ways of getting to school, right? If I want to know, I could ask every single person in the school, but say the school has a thousand students, is it practical to go around and ask every single one of them how they get there? No. So what I'm going to do, my population is the entire school, is all the students, all the students at the school. And my sample, I'm going to choose at random. So we might get a random number generator, um, which you can get in Excel or you can get on your calculator. It's the function called randint, rand, which means random integer. And then you just say between, you know, one and a thousand, something like that. And you give every student in the school, according to, you know, an alphabetical list or something, you give them a number from one to a thousand, and then you you generate your random numbers, which might be, you know, like 15, 37, 129, 352, something like that. We get a whole series of random numbers. And then we just find which student applies to each number. We take their name and we say, OK, I've got a sample from my thousand. I'm going to ask 100 people. And here they all are. Here's these 100 random numbers that I've generated. Here's the list of names that I'm going to ask. I go find those students. I ask them how they get to school. And using those 100 points of data, I can say, well, pretty much that's what that's the going to be the um, trend across a thousand people, because I haven't just looked at the preps and I haven't just looked at the year 12s. You know, there might be a lot of year 12s driving a car, but there ain't going to be a lot of preps driving a car, for example. So you just have to make sure that your sample represents everyone in the population, not just one particular group. Here's a little cartoon that uh, demonstrates the point really well. This is taken from the Further Maths textbook uh, published by Longman. Over here we've got a guy on the left and he's saying, uh, this drug cures cancer. I tested it on five people and they have all recovered. Do you think that is a good sample that he's chosen there? So my first question is, what do you think the population is? So this cures cancer. So it could be the population might be everyone in the world might be everyone in the world who has cancer. It could be everyone in Australia who has cancer. It's not really well defined, but you can see that these five people are not our uh, are not our population because he's saying this cures cancer for all the human beings in the world, isn't he? Okay, this guy over here, the average height of an Australian male is 182 centimetres. I measured the members of the Essendon football team. So again, not the best selection of samples to... Um, extend out to the entire um, population of all Australian males. So this is what the population is here, the height of an Australian male. So all males in Australia is our population. And the sample, he, sample he's used is the Essendon football team. A better sample would be taking um, census data or uh, medical records, something like that, uh, because this is going to be biased in a big way, of course. So some quick definitions. A population is a group of people or objects to whom you can apply any conclusions or generalizations that you reach in your investigation. So the population is the whole group and they're the people that you're going to apply these generalizations that you figure out from a smaller group. A sample is a smaller group of people or objects who have been chosen from the population and are, and are involved in the investigation. So that's the smaller group and they they are from the population that you're trying to make these generalizations about and those are the ones who you actually investigate. You find out their heights or you find out their how they get to school or something like that. And finally, a simple random sample is a random selection from the population such that every member of that population has an equal chance of being chosen in the sample and the choice of one member does not affect the choice of another. So if the sample that you've chosen, for it to be accurate and uh, useful statistically for you to be able to apply it to the rest of the population, it, it needs to be a simple random sample. And that means that it's all random. There's no bias in the way they've been chosen. And so each person has an equal chance of being chosen. 
and also the choice of one member does not affect the choice of another. So if you have a, a simple random sample of 10 and you find that you've got eight females and two males and you think to yourself, oh, well, that's not going to be a very good sample. Hey, if it's random and that's what happened with the random numbers, that's what you go with. So you, you don't look at the data, you don't look at the sample and say, oh, well, I better disclude a few people because of such and such. Every member has the same chance of being chosen as another.